Hello subscribers, hello others. It's David Hoffman, filmmaker with my bird friend here. People ask me why I'm wearing a hat with my own name on it. Do I not know my own name? I don't know, it's just part of my image, as is this bird that's been with me for 45 years since I bought it in Maine from a friend of mine. Just gives me confidence. Well, I'm going to show you a film from 1954. It was my first boss who made this film when I was still in school, but he gave it to me. And it's a wonderful uh, exploration of the world with a style that's really unusual for that time. You know, at that time, people used heavy tripods, big cameras, the 16 millimeter era, the era that I started making films in, hadn't begun yet. Um, it was really conservative. And this guy made a film which is not at all conservative. He made it for the Unitarian Universalist Church. They had a mission to help people around the world, to help the poorest of the poor. I want you to think about 1953, 1954, before you see this film. So first of all, the Korean War had ended. It was a horrible war. I think as many of our troops got killed in the Korean War as were killed in the Vietnam War. Cold, muddy, sloggy. And it was a war we didn't win. Not like World War II. We didn't lose it. We didn't win it. There was a negotiation, North Korea, South Korea, and the men came home. 1954, polio. Polio was huge. I went to camp, and in that camp, there were 1,800 boys, YMCA camp. We were there six weeks. Our parents got a letter saying somebody got polio, so we would have to stay in the camp for another two weeks isolated. Polio was a big deal. And Jonas Salk had invented this vaccine, and there were mass vaccinations around the country, uh, I could show you mine, where polio vaccine was gotten and you didn't get polio, thank God. It was also the time of the Cold War. The Cold War, we were hearing it all the time in school. They're gonna get us, we're gonna get them, we both have nuclear weapons, better get under your desks. So there's a lot of tension in the world. And the Unitarian Universalist Church decides to make this beautiful film to give a feeling for what they're doing to help the poorest of the poor. So the film was highly experimental, as I said, and give it a little time because it's a feeling of hope and positiveness and the world is going to get better and people around the world are going to come together and the poorest of the poor will get help. Seed, springing bud, green shoots of all our lives, all lands, this earth, flowering man, blossoming woman, a garland of every child, a bouquet of frolic, a skipping of feet, a dance of eyes. Can you see them, follow them, afar in what strange countries? No farther away than your heart. No more distant than your hand. The hand they reach for some children everywhere. They who are small, they the defenseless. Nimble, frisking as lambs they dally, yet some of them unpastured some grazing upon parched fields, their carefree age astray in a careworn time. Meet their glances, do not avert your own. The turning aside is the beginning of defeat. Look, look upon the children of men. Consider the undefended. Look long, reach.
children are abandoned here by their parents. They are left at the gate or on the road. What else can they do when they have so many children in their family? They cannot care for even one child. Korean farmers are very poor. Farms are tiny, and yet they have a large families. When I was traveling in Europe, I had occasion to visit several individual farm homes. Out of 20, almost all had only two children or one. So I found that maybe our greatest problem here in Korea is just to solve a population problem. This woman has already seven children. She doesn't want to have any more. That is why she came here. Her husband is a worker. He makes a very small wages. They are very poor. She is 40 years old, and she is just afraid she will have more children. That is why she came here. Go Africans, you know, used to look after their relatives' children. But now, since, you know, there's been such a change from the reserves to town and cost of living is high, and nobody wants to be responsible for anybody's child. Sometimes babies are discovered dead in the forest or something like that, because they know there's no way to tend to. So I think it would be a worthwhile thing to have a place where such children, you know, could be helped, because it isn't their own fault that they, they should uh, you know, suffer. <laughs> so I really would love to see this into a children's home, where children of all, you know, needy cases could be looked after. <laughs> blind as the love of mothers, their faces turn to their children, and mingled with love, their gentle wonder at the tumbling ways up from the cradle of babble and leaps and laughter, leading to midget todays and the promise of tall tomorrows. of their hearts, they gaze into green futures of days calmed by the lilt of their lullabies 
and lands at peace under the silken stroke of their fingers. The world of wish, the tremulous wishes of mothers. Living out in the suburbs like I do, I lead a pretty sheltered life. I don't meet many people that aren't of the petite bourgeois middle class. Uh, when I first came down here, you know, I was like, not, not prejudiced, but you'd look at a person as a twinge as to what color he was, but after a while it gets so you look at a person, you just forget what color he is, and he's just a friend of yours. It's fantastic. It's made, I've grown 100%. Oh, but well, the main purpose is to smoke. Uh, better understanding between the races. But the second objective is to clean the center. <laughs> I think, well, to me, you know, it's all right. I don't mind coming in there and helping the center, because they do things for me. Uh, well, it helped me a little. Like, uh, uh, you know, I, when I came up here last time, I was cook, and uh, I got a job cooking after I left here. Well, um, I feel quite uh, wanted in this family. I feel almost a member of the family here. Although, of course, the standards of living is different. The sort of life that I'm used to at home is quite different from the life here. How about the screen? Yeah, can't I just try on this? Yes, why don't you? Try on this one and then that one, which has a little bit. I'll wait for you here to do it. Yeah, I like that too. In fact, I think I may like that better. Try the blue one now, sweetheart. I think the blue one has a full skirt. I think this is a better dancing one. I have been in the high school for the last two years. I would like to go to the college for about two more years. And then I will return to Kenya and I would like to teach. I think the white is, has a... Uh, there's something about white and senior high graduation that seems to go together with cats. Okay. Makes me feel all sniffy. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe we ought to look somewhere else. <laughs> no. no. That's what we're looking. Yeah. So what do we pay? What do we do? I don't know. They just pay the cashier right oh, over here. Get over there. For that gentleman's cash. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he can't come in. You can't come in. Well, you, you, you come with us. You can come with us. I like to come in. Hola, mio. Ya lo quito. Mira, doctor Juan. Mira, pajarito. Me va a comer un mujer con dulce. Ay, santa. Yo soy mi hijita para salir a la cera. No está ni un peso a la mujer. Ay, santa. You can't be nervous with these people because they sense it. You got to be calm. That's, that's one of the main things. You got to be calm, no matter how upset they are. You've got to be calm. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and so I figured that this would give me a chance to think a little. Because I don't make any money, I work awful hard. But, and, and I don't know how rewarding it is, except that. It's sort of nice to watch these people smile sometimes. Uh, most common diseases are schizophrenia. Uh, most of the ones we have hospitalized are suffering from that. Uh, we are trying to, to get help for our patients, so it doesn't matter that we don't have a, a psychiatrist or a nurses. Uh, 
because uh, the people that the Unitarians sent to us uh, help us uh, playing with the patients, talking with them, uh, cooperating in occupational therapy, uh, well, uh, trying to make them feel as a human beings, you know, and that's very important for patients. By the power of God, the way I am working now, within 15 years' time, the fruits of my efforts will show, and my children are going to benefit from this. encouraging thing about the Our Mama project is that it is a natural thing. There's nothing artificial, there's nothing to hide, there's nothing that is uh, superimposed on the people. See, everything we have done here has been a, a, a result of partnership between Our Mama people and our American friends, the Unitarian Service Committee. And uh, my job is just that of, that of uh, a bridge, you know, a connecting link between a good people and a good purpose. I don't know. Years ago, I was sick, and I had to go elsewhere to be treated. This year, I became sick, and I just went to the hospital right here in our mama. It's good to be treated in one's own village. Well, I think that's a tremendous change here. And most of these changes are, cannot be counted in terms of buildings, or in terms of their internal change, change in attitude towards life. That's my biggest consolation here. People have begun to think and have begun to ask questions and have begun to change their values for the better. You know modify their values of say of change modify uh, I want a better hospital now in the college and the two in here did you see me got playing look when you cruise on a generated the hour I did you ever thought in here maybe and the post office school did you tell me who we our mama has better things now there are better hospitals, there are colleges, there is a post office, and then there is this big road running through the middle of the town which will help us distribute our products. But the difference is that the people here needed something. And uh, they were, many for many years, as it were, were looking for somebody to kind of, you know, spark the plug. And uh, everything they're doing here is a response to their own felt need. But they want roads to the houses, so we build the roads. They needed a hospital very, very badly. So that's not nearby. It wasn't superimposed on them. To me, this is one of the magics, you know. In the next five, six years, I should have trained enough people to begin to take over most of these things. And some of the functions I performed uh, six years ago, I have now handed over because people like 
this young man here can now perform those functions. in the vivid sun, squatted in rice paddies, the human toiler tethered to his narrow ward of earth, the woman as her mothers and mothers before her, man as his unnumbered fathers before him, delving, mixing, hoisting, carrying, still as through the ages, the hard single burden for the solitary lifter, the one humble bowl for the one hungering family, the same rudimentary tools, the same bent forms and quivering muscles, pounding, planting, scouring, cutting. From the first thrust of light to its waning, all days, all lands, the people of all colors, thatching frail roofs against fierce elements, fashioning lean mortal dikes against stalwart destiny, toiling in rice paddies, a squint in the vivid sun. Korean people struggling so much. <laughs> 